Hey there everyone, uh, welcome to my radio channel and um, this is a little quick tutorial kind of make uh, the difference between what is a scanner and a general coverage receiver so these here are uh, two old scanners and one pretty new general coverage receiver what's the difference? well first of all they all do similar things uh, when you look at the basic features so they will uh, have some frequency coverage in the VHF and UHF range they will scan at different speeds in signals so here is a regular scanner this one is like a scanner so it's uh, the, the frequency range is like for from 30 to 50 may 54 megahertz then jumps from 108 to 174 uh, then has this one has 225 up to 512 megahertz and then it has 800 megahertz coverage from uh, 86 to 99 999 megahertz so almost one gigahertz so most scanners actually have breaks in their frequency coverage so uh, lots of frequencies are uh, impossible to tune this one has a frequency range that is close to this one except for the 225 megahertz it doesn't have it starts at 400 but as a different feature which is called trunking trunking means that this one has the capability of following communications from some towers that actually have computer type control where the radios are controlled on um, trunking basically is that you have a certain amount of users on one antenna and what happens is that um, for example the antenna might have 12 different frequencies but there could be 100 users thing is there aren't 100 people that want to talk at the same time usually so what happens is the computer when somebody wants to talk will assign a frequency with the ID of the transmitter so this radio the Pro 92 here this one is a trunk scanner it can actually listen to that tower and receive the information and go to the frequency where the transmission is actually happening so same features both are called scanners here on the uh, right of your screen and so one has trunking follows the digital type of uh, communications from uh, that that can happen whether it's analog communications but controlled by computers the white one is really the basic scanner which receives frequency ranges but on the left we've got one here this is the icom icr20 and this is a communications receiver and why is it called a communications receiver not a scanner well first of all it does what the others here can do except for trunking this does not have trunking but it will scan the frequency ranges of these two no problem but it has more features it has more modes so usually a scanner like the two on the right have AM and FM mode and that's it this one has AM, FM, FM wide it has single sideband and CW capabilities so a lot more lots more modes another feature of a communications receiver is the frequency coverage usually they're not uh, by groups you know like the right the one on the right like I told you they're like from 30 to 54 megahertz then it jumps from 108 to um, 174 then it jumps the one the icon on the left of your screen the communications receiver this one is a general coverage it goes from 150 kilohertz way down in the long wave band and is continuous up to 3.3 gigahertz 3304 megahertz so you can see a communications receiver will have really a larger frequency range unless you're in a country where these frequencies are blocked some frequencies are blocked uh, usually a communications receiver will not have holes in the reception it will be continuous from the lowest frequency to the highest frequency so that frequency coverage with more different modes to receive 
and also lots of other features that are unavailable into a uh, regular scanner. For example, on the ICOM, you've got uh, programmable uh, steps, RF gain. A scanner will, will usually follow pre-programmed steps that you cannot change. So, for example, in uh, VHF, uh, from 108 to 136, uh, they'll scan in 25 kilohertz space. Uh, 136 to 174, there's a mixed bag of uh, 5 kilohertz or 12.5 kilohertz, depending on the communications. On the communications receiver here, it's programmable from a space of 10 hertz to something like one megahertz at a time. So you really have lots more flexibility in a communications receiver. You choose the mode, you choose the tuning step, so something you cannot do and what is called a scanner. So the, these are the main differences. Uh, so depending on what you want to do, what should you buy? Well, it depends what you want to do. If you just want to listen to your local police, buy yourself a basic scanner and that's going to do the job. And you got to listen to lots of signals with your basic scanner. And they start at like $99 and going up, depending on the frequency coverage you want. If you want to listen to more exotic signals, for example, I like to listen to AM radio satellites in the 2 meter band uh, on 145, 44 megahertz and the 70 centimeter band uh, 430, 440 megahertz uh, also have satellites. You'll need a communications receiver that has those different modes and also uh, more flexibility in the tuning. So uh, basically that's pretty much the difference between what is a scanner and a communications receiver. Of course you can buy a communications receiver like the ICOM on the left or any other model. There's lots of model. Um, even to listen to the local police if that's what you want but just remind yourself that a basic communications receiver like on the left uh, is much more expensive than a scanner so if you only do two meter ham radio repeater listening and police a scanner it will be less expensive and will do the job but if you want to listen to exotic signals or on frequency ranges not available on most scanners, then you'll need a communications receiver like the one on the left. So hope uh, that helps you understand the differences. And if you have any comments or questions, let us know. It's always fun to have comments and I will be happy to answer any questions you might have. <coughs> Sorry. So thanks for watching. And uh, this was a quick little, um, I would say, tutorial on the different main differences between scanners and communications receivers. So 73s.